We have some cool uploads. At least five of them. Let's find out. We're definitely gonna pair Sniper against Jax films again. And it might actually be close this time. And Grade A under A is also a pretty crazy upload, bro. Mugbang, let's go! Interfing with Penguin Zero, being satirized by Meat Canyon, and was even called it. Let's go so much Mugbang, guys. By the way, I want to send a tiny message about birthdays. And I think I've already done it. But it's best to just celebrate your own birthday properly. And that's it. Then only people who care about your birthday will uh, remember which day is it. And will will want to celebrate next year again. That's how you fucking battle people, basically. Who has the most memorable birthday is the question. Who actually celebrates? Because you can, like, again, invite and be friendly with everyone around you. It should be fucking like that. I'm trying to figure out, in my entire lifetime, I think I only celebrated two other people's birthdays. That I remember. Two. Surely there there were more events that I went into, like physically. But that was crazy. Even from the very beginning, I'm like, kind of making pretty decent birthdays. Actually, three. I remember one more. My mine's at March. Wow, March fifth, and uh, the hunger strike is gonna be over by then. Funny enough, because March uh, 4th is going to decide if I'm in trouble or not at all. A birthday party is supposed to be, like, simple enough, where a lot of people can be invited. It's not supposed to be fucking alcohol-infested nonsense. It's the weirdest thing where people grow up and they become toxic and just unbelievable to deal with. Because self-improvement is somehow, like, reversed. And it's so much more interesting. Fast cars and lots of fucking drinks. And a bunch of nasty behavior that, like, I can't relate to any of this shit. Like, at all. What people do my age, I imagine, I can't relate to anything. Because I can't even contact like-minded people. I mean... But yeah, eventually, you just like, well... You celebrate your birthday, you don't have to remember anyone else's. Because that's that wasn't memorable enough. You know, you didn't celebrate it well enough. So of course I don't remember it. Fuck that shit. That's, that's the way you fucking do it. If you don't remember someone's name, they're pieces of shit, basically. They're terrible human beings that didn't spend enough time with you. So of course you don't remember the name. This is how you fucking have to put your mindset... Instead of being nice, just be just. And it makes life a lot easier and more straightforward. Doesn't it? And do a lot of mud mug bangs when you do your birthday. Then you need more people. Slowly killing himself and documenting the journey the entire time while having an understanding of exactly what he's doing. Nick 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 Sounds like me. Now I'm, I'm just responding to the pressure. You know, I'll just be very weak and unwilling to take bullshit seriously. YouTubers began to suggest he implement. I would love there to be an insane redemption arc in this story. Oh, everyone would love that. On every person's story who is trying to exploit YouTube for fame and fortune. I world hated him. Being admired by the audience might have actually been a negative. Oh yeah, of course. You get into my territory where nobody cares about me because I'm not doing controversial bullshit. I actually have so much sanity that no one can actually contribute properly because they will just make me angry because they are very likely to say something stupid and I will get to see it and read it. In other words, I'm the most repulsive person on Earth. Ricardo Ricardo steadily. Steadily. 
I mean, maybe in terms of the internet and popularity contest, I'm the most repulsive. But if you're trying to get happiness, getting the world to hate you is not exactly a happy, uh, you know, lifestyle. Well, it, it, as much hate as you can handle, fucking take it and uh, cash out. But eventually you do have to go through that redemption arc to be able to clean yourself of all this noise, you know. This guy also suffering from noise, you can tell. All right, they're best friends forever. One has to feed each other certain things, I guess. Jazz. These podcasts make me unironically like. Yeah, so that's the, the whole question mark of like, when people start cleaning themselves up, will someone actually reach me? Reach my level? Because I'll be very loud and proud about people getting closer to my level. Any sort of drama happens and the redemption arc has to be achieved, I'll be there, you know? I'll have to talk about it. And maybe it's going to touch more and more people. Maybe they're just going to be faster at doing it. Or better at harvesting attention myself. Like, I still want to experiment with a new channel. Or drama, specifically. I had seemingly made a deal with the devil. The more... Over my Patreon, everyone has their tipping point. And you know, I have thick skin. Very thick skin, but... Very thick skin. Mm, I can tell. I can tell that you don't care much. I mean, again, it's not ridiculous to get hatred, but it is something. You have to be extremely social about it. And then you have to monetize the hatred or the attention or whatever. The controversial existence. Because everyone has to exist in a controversial way to spin people's heads around. They just have to do it. I haven't done it. I can't afford risks in my life because I grew up with poor parents who don't have anything at all to give me. No sanity at all to waste on social, uh, you know, hierarchy. I had to build everything myself. But here we are. Probably significantly better than everyone else. Because they sold their souls to the devil. They think they have things, but they don't have anything to talk about. And that's the, the biggest problem. If you... Like, it's the most basic thing. Have stuff to talk about. Because that's the thing that you're supposed to share with other people. You don't share food with other people necessarily. Unless they're close friends. But you can definitely talk about anything you want on a camera with anyone who wants to watch it. It's easy to be a clown, but after the clown phase, do you have something to talk about? To talk about something, you have to know what you experienced and how important it is to know for the other person. And that's a little bit of work, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if you... I've observed many humans, my friends. And I'm pretty sure I know what they need to hear. The information, I can fill in the blanks. And uh, they can try and tell their story, but... I'll fix it for them. We have clowns and scammers. These sort of people who deal with the same thing over and over again. Like, they're the most boring people in actuality. But money is not boring. So hopefully that helps. I don't know. Funny enough, while money might make your life less boring, but only if you avoid slavery. Otherwise, no. And slavery could be a, uh, acting like a clown for attention and monetizing that shit. That's the best case scenario for getting money, after all. So usually a thing to talk about is how to save money, not how to earn money. Yes, Andrew Tate can come in and be like, 
you can break the matrix because I fucking did it and I, I built this business thing that's also a scam. And it's like, wow. That is not exactly impressive. That's just how businesses work. If you control it and you scale it, you earn a lot of money. It's just how it works. You haven't broken a matrix. This is done by many people. Especially the desperate ones who really want money for some reason. I don't know why you need money. But uh, some personalities like narcissism thrives on money. So, of course. But now even Tate himself is like struggling to find things to talk about. Is the only thing that he wants to do with his life in public. Just talk about things. And display a color of Bugatti. And then go to jail for entertain to entertain the masses, you know. Like, hmm, wow. Have it all always been eleven minutes? Not really. That's a high end. To get 11 minutes grade 8 what do you well it, kind of high end and look at that mate it's now less than two dollars man this is a, <laughs> this is fucking weird man it's the only time like wait nordvpn can do that shit maybe that's worth it I don't know the drawbacks. There gotta be drawbacks. Holy shit. But this... <laughs> this is fascinating, bro. I'm telling you, fucking grade A can... can do fucking amazing things I'm, that you never expect. And this is how I feel. Tickets! Concert tickets! Yeah, I mean, people mentioned plane tickets before. But shit. This went to a whole nother level. Oh, Jesus! What's going on here, man? You can't bleep out Jesus! Yeah, swear words are definitely complicated. And you want to find as much liberation from all the censorship and nonsense as uh, possible. You want to get the most benefit as possible. Does that mean we have to be creative somehow? And find a different way to swear? Because everything is being bleeped to extreme nonsense levels. The biggest question is, what are we trying to protect from all of this? Because, uh, yeah, that's my main argument. Of, like, negativity is worse than swear words. You know, this is what we should be censoring as much as possible, like ourselves from negativity from saying negative things but saying uh this fucking shit happened to me bro it's not negative it is kind of dirty and maybe unnecessary but you can improve from here so how do you improve how do you emphasize you know usually swear words emphasize things and well, something negative could have happened to you, but you have a story to tell. You have an experience. You have captured it. So it's not negative anymore. You have lived through it. But this fucking shit happened, bro. It's very frustrating. But you get to tell the story now. So uh, swear words are, like, kind of necessary. I wouldn't... If I, if I can push buttons as a YouTube CEO, I would just remove that shit. Of, like, if you... And switch it to negativity censorship instead of, like, actual censorship. I don't care. I really... I, I don't really care. Like, if... I've seen demonic shit being thrown into videos as if, like, it's always oh, skewed and funny and whatnot. That should be censored. That's disgusting. You know? Like, it sort of has to be there, but, like, the reputation has to go down. Unnecessary swear words, of course. Uh, too dirty, too messy, like, yeah. But occasionally, if you do it the right way, like, they're pretty fucking useful. 
again, it's uh, the emphasis, the uh, sort of the value. As a programmer, I understand, like, to give plus two value to something is a pretty big deal. You play an extra card to buff your monster, plus one, plus one, bro. It's a big deal. It changes things. Emphasis is crazy, bro. So understand where grade A is coming from. Uh, interesting problem that he's tackling for the second time. And now let's get to the main part of the video. And by the way, I have nothing to say about JonTron. It's just weird that he's teaming up with Timu. Because that sounds controversial and I don't remember why. I'll just stay away from that place. You know, unlike he did, didn't, and bought a bunch of random products as a comedy bit, but not really. It's it's a whole, whole nother level of advertisement, I would say. A whole episode about just buying random shit. Yeah, Jax Films and Sniper World was like fucking 10 minutes apart. That is crazy. That's quite unusual. Even grade A almost almost have a blocked sniper wolf. Uh and because I I respect sniper wolf more, I'll give her a glitch. I'll just give her a glitch for free. Normally I would evaluate both contents. But let's see who's better. My favorite thing to do, I would imagine. I'll start with Jack's films. What's your name? It wasn't funny. Like, what? For those who don't know, I actually made my own entry. And I laughed at my own shit so much that I don't care if Jack's films will never- Today's color of Bugatti is... Turquoise! What color is your Bugatti? Was that over there? Hello, friends, it's me. Even in 10 seconds, I can make a controversy, bro. It was so funny to make this shit. Holy crap. Crazy. By the way, there's no real good Jax Films commentary. Well, like, I like Sniper Wolf's commentary way more. She should teach him how to do it. Like, oof. This, this gets so fucking bizarre to me. What he just did, and he got away with that, is so bizarre. Look at this, despite having 17 subscribers, that be Wow, so interesting numbers and stuff. <laughs> oh. Friggin' slideshow with those stills. But I'm such a sucker for when a video abruptly has like very fluid near. Oh yeah, such a fucking sucker for bad commentary. <laughs> Like, he, he just kind of talking to other creators who barely understand what the fuck's going on anyways with his commentary. He's just talking with himself, basically, the connoisseur of whatever this is. <laughs> it's garbage, bro. Oh, man, we're at $900. That's almost $1,000. Uh, that's rough. Three videos in, and I'm only, I'm almost I'm a grand in. 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 I'm almost yeah, you looked at one fucking number and now you have a lot of fucking things to talk about. And then it doesn't fucking stop there. Almost a grand deep in uh, owed payments. Well, that sucks. <laughs> and Stop laughing, it's not funny. Please don't laugh at my financial misfortune. Yeah, I mean, we're not laughing, we're not even interested. Please continue with fucking watching videos. But it's not done yet. I love you, baby. I, I've only lost $900 so far. You realize that's my money. All right, whatever, girl boss. Make us some more so that I can keep laughing. I'm gonna take Chipwich. Oh, she's yours. Hi, everyone, everyone. I didn't know what she even said. Like, what the fuck is the point? Yo. Out of all things, like, Jax Films is known for clarity, but kind of failed miserably with his wife. Whenever I feel overwhelmed with responsibilities and tasks, I use this all the time, and I never would have heard of it if it weren't for therapy. But therapy can seem like this big... Therapy could seem like 
I offer it for free, but you want to fucking spend money to feel like you're talking to an expert instead. Well, good luck with that. Their goal is to make therapy legal. Their goal is to take money from you. Ha ha. Because healthcare in America is to take money from you. Ha ha. To make therapy less intimidating and more accessible. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist. The rapist or... Uh... Uh, simply an NPC than to have learned some basic tricks. My mom came in with uh, policemen and uh, medical people. I don't know, bro. Ambulance people. How do you even call them, bro? I don't even have the the terminology for it. I need therapy for that alone. Fucking traumatizing. And they're kind of like fucking useless. They take my identity of like, they listen to my report and uh, they can't do shit. They can like talk to these people downstairs who make noise. I don't know why my mom was so urged to run to police as if uh, something is threatening her. I was just kicking the fucking wall because, uh, you know, that's what my neighbors deserve. But now, nah, bro, I get to talk to a bunch of NPCs as if, like, a lot of people trying to pretend that they're helpful. They put on a facade. But that facade fucking costs a lot of effort. And uh, then you d don't actually get any value in the end. Like, are these people actually smart? Because licensed, like, means anything. Where do you get a fucking license? You should get a license by actually helping people and getting, you know, voted into a license of like, oh, this, he actually gives good advice. That's a good therapy thing because they have to think about where to find the problems that you're suffering from and how to solve them. If I can do that for you, I'm a good fucking therapist and I deserve a fucking license, you know, and maybe there's more things that I deserve than just one license. Maybe I deserve fucking ten of them for different various things, like a programmer license. Thank you, Jack's phones, for being a little bitch. All right, that should be a license too of like disrespecting Jack's phones. Only a few handful of people should be able to do it. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist, and your sessions can be all from your phone or computer via phone call, video. Oh, video. And uh. Just a simple reminder, if you need therapy, you probably also need friends. If better help is your better help, you probably just need good friends. Fucking licensed friends. Yeah. That's, that's what you get. Like, if you offer money to people, they're going to be nice to you. And you have infinite possibilities of finding nice people. For money. Of course, they have to reach for money. It's the, the most fun thing you can do. So, uh, just like Jax Films is offering $300, so uh, someone tries to make him laugh, and he gets some quality content for his competition. That's what it is. You offer people money, and they're nice to you. That's all you're going to get from better help. It's not going to be any fucking different than that. All right, enough of Gamer Boo and Mr. President Get Down. Seven hundred fifty dollars? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. That's just so fucking much, though. I can't. We have to move on. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. That's the last you'll hear from me. That's just so goddamn much. much? Wow. Uh, you might have borderline personality disorder in there. So let me be clear. We're at two thousand. No, the the clear part was pretty good, but you referring to your money loss. It's kind of like, we've we're done that. We have to do the clear the thing. Well, at least you lost uh, twice as more money than previously. So that, that's redemption right there. All right, Jack's content. Pretty much trash. But that's how we like it. Now I gotta make myself comfortable because I 
I carry snipe roll just as much as she carry herself. You know, like I have to be very interested. Let's fucking go, boys. You gotta suit up. Mmm. Let's fucking go, boys. It was a dark day for crackers and the aftermath. Just open the window, let the birds come in. This is so fucking brilliant. Like, how the fuck you come up with the bird thing? What? I mean, uh, maybe that was the strategy that Snipe Wolf missed. Throw a bunch of crackers in Jack's film's uh, house and then open the window. And uh, <laughs> there's going to be one less lonely cracker, bro. <laughs> Somehow that's funny, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Fucking hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Needs better help. So there's no one <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I gotta stop doing these videos when I'm hungry. I don't care what you put on my screen right now, I would most likely take a bite. Here's some Jack Potatoes. And then the first magazine. Inside the proposal. Then the next one. Getting married. Then the last one. It's over? Bruh, all in the same week? That's a celebrity marriage for you. It's like the more money you spend on the... Not the same week, but like... Pretty cool. Man, the old school sniper roll fucking sucks. So bad. So unwatchable. Most of it is reacting to... Pictures, bro. <laughs> I'm from farm to table. What is this? From hoop to soup? The way he just ran right into it. Pop. <laughs> this might get violent, but no. Through the glass. Just do you know what this is, little kitten? <laughs> <laughs> Here's ten seconds for Jackson's to react to. Oh no! He cannot pick up! Oh, he just chilled! <laughs> Whoops. No, oh, we had to peel off layers of our skin after our period. Yes, yeah, so oh guys, if you didn't know this, this is... Every single time I show a clip, it's like, I get a chuckle, and it's like... I don't think I chuckled at all during Jack's film's video. We got... <laughs> Number three, we got it. Number four, we got B. Hey, that's pretty good. Number five. Who's taking a shower? And she just decides to pink smoke bomb right in the shower? I'm surprised the person in there didn't automatically just like open up the shower now. Nah, just just wash it away. Karen, I'm not so sure this was the place or time for a gender reveal. That got me, bro. Gender reveal, bro? <laughs> That got me because it fucking confused me. I'm like, wait, that makes sense. Yeah, she does look like she has a baby in there. She's not gonna. It's a prank! This prank was about as real as the Ferrari in my garage. And unfortunately, I don't have a Ferrari in my. my... How dare you? Here in my garage, I just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. here. Man, she's correct. It's not a Ferrari. He started posing. It makes me think like when you do pranks, if people react nicely, you should reward them with something like for fuck's sake. I don't know. Everything else felt mediocre, but the initial video that spawned this whole adventure was kind of very good, like a 200. Yeah. We'll hope for better days at some point. Even Gabby joined the gang, bro. Holy shit. It seems like the biggest hunger strike side effect is the strain on my right hand that handles, well, the mouse. It's, it's kind of like frozen feeling growing numb a little bit it's very difficult to 
Like, there, there's a little bit of a feeling there. That it's like a weaker, more worn off hand. Definitely I notice it and that kind of weirds me out every now and then. Anyways, what are we going to do next? We can actually squeeze in a Mario movie in here. A whole goddamn movie experience. I think the most interesting thing I can do is do Mario versus Sonic idea, even though it's supposed to be its own special episode. I believe AVGN already done that. Sonic versus Mario. Here it is. But there's no way he went into a conclusion of who actually wins, right? This is. Yeah, actually, my hand feels like I punched something really hard. Like, it's so fucking damaged. And I have not done that, right? The runtime seems exactly the same. Second movie, though, two hours. What the fuck? Wow, neither of them have the upper edge. Wow, they even tell the whole origin story of Mario. Or Mario and Luigi. A fighting internet Bowser. You know? Yeah, nobody mentioned that we're gonna see the Mario origins when he's a plumber and gonna go into Mushroom Kingdom and do everything. Including save his brother, not the princess? That's a little bit unusual, but okay. Best part of the movie is when the Mario picks up a game controller to play a fucking platformer of some kind. <laughs> the Inception is unreal. Bruh, there's murder side by side as well. The word murder, bro. That's what I get to wake up to. Hmm. All right, let's go back to the the ultimate battle. I mean, I can already tell like Mario's designs much better, but we we now now there's a intrigue of like what is Sonic supposed to do to interest me? Yeah, it feels like there's a little bit too much cartoonism going on in Mario. When something bad is happening, like it's out of control bad, a dog attacks Mario and Luigi and it's like, it goes on and on and on and just fucking, oh, the dog almost dies and falls off a skyscraper. Like, what the fuck, man? It's a little bit exaggerated and it kind of makes me cringe a little bit. And I think uh, Sonic is not going to have these features. This is also a little bit exaggerated when Mario comes in into this place and no one really cares. Like, these NPCs just remain NPCs. Despite there's a different dude there. Characters. We don't see... Ah, uh, they don't show. They just keep doing their things, which is kind of fascinating, fascinating in the way, but rips off personality definitely like there's a there's a different person in town how do you not pay attention they don't give a fuck until something bad happens <laughs> we're one third into the movie and the score for mario is 35 i actually gonna give one extra point for this uh insight of like so Mario gets to meet the princess. She's not being called by her name. And uh, he barely gets saved while being attacked because it's cartoon. And uh, he has to be attacked while he enters the castle. But it's weird. Like, it, it's the only other human in the Mushroom Kingdom. It's like, what? And everyone's an, an NPC. It's like shit. That's a, that's a very interesting love story. Is that is that how all the love stories work? 
Yeah, I hate the review because he's trying to like rip it into pieces and say, oh, the music, supporting characters, he fucking rips it all apart. And I, I mean, I don't think you're going to get to see a lot of things that way, but it, you get to remember a lot of things that way. I can see with the movie right now. There's a really weird backstory to Mario of him not liking mushrooms. That is bizarre. But I, I guess it adds flavor, I don't know. Now you have to live amongst mushrooms. So the biggest thing that carried Mario into relevancy is Peaches, 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 of course. Now we get to hear the name because it, you know, delayed gratitude, so to speak. So at 40 minutes, we get to see Bowser sing the fucking meme thing of how much he's mesmerized, but he only uses brute force to get his things. The score is 45. Again, it's very emotional to like... Peaches goes into the Mushroom Kingdom as a baby and then she harvests all the power, all the positivity. And now Mario jumps in and kind of like... They're best friends immediately. It's a very bizarre story, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, now that memes are hijacked by children, the only way to communicate with children is to repeat the same word a bunch of times and make something bizarre happen. Or Bowser is actually on a piano. It's like, what? That's the only way you can make a meme. But that felt like a speedrun of a meme. Because you make a song the way you just repeat one word. It's so weird, man. You know, it's, uh, if you have seen a movie, right? You know that I like trains and then something happens. So this is how you make a meme, like actually a normal meme. You see something, but something fucking happens. And <laughs> what is that? Does that mean memes are like magical words? Mm -hmm. 50 minutes. And that many scores. So one point every minute. And now Mario is facing Donkey Kong because he wants the army to help. And the funny thing happens elemental wise. Donkey Kong seems to be like an angry ape. So he's Earth, and uh, Mario gets a lucky power-up of being a cat, and cats are fire, and then uh, he wins the match, but he gets beaten up beforehand really badly, and turns into tiny Mario. <laughs> Whatever that's supposed to do, that's a power-up. Man, this this Peach's meme is like, it's pretty bad, because now it it infects her name. It messes with your brain, bro. Every single time, I'm like, we just have to call her Princess now. It's there's no escape. Fifty five minutes in, and a lot of weird shit happens because now Mario has a cart. And now you realize they're cramming in as much Mario shit as possible. Internet Bowser also is, uh, I mean, apparently you would be very lonely and like very unhinged, I would say. You just see that one goal in your mind. The only positive light there is and there's a very weird fight between good and evil i would say that i relate to very much where the girl is in the middle and there's the fucking the bully that has its own uh 
army and there's a fucking baby who doesn't know what the fuck is going on. I feel like I'm I'm a baby because you know if I was good this whole time, I'll have to learn how to be bad. Yeah, but there's only one winner when facing these. I wonder if I have uh, my arch nemesis though. Wait. Alright, he's laughing at the cat suit, but underestimating the powers of efficiency. One hour. And uh, the narrative is like danger is everywhere. Koopas have like a lot of lives. The bad guys are very fucking strong, bro. Like, wow. And everyone's getting separated, kidnapped, all that fucking jazz, bro. There's so much destruction. It's literally hopeless. There's 30 minutes to flip the script, bro, and let Mario in. Huh? What the fuck? Marry me? I would never. Mario! I'm not gonna say Mario, so... That's how they came up with a name. Marry you? Mario. I would never marry a monster. Ma marry a? Also sounds like Mario. Wow. Ah, yes, the most uh, common name ever. Anyways. That kind of whispers what marriage is, the idea of marriage. A woman becomes weak eventually, fucking useless and uh, unattractive eventually, starting to lose her powers. And then uh, the baby rage happens. You get to eat your jacked potatoes, but at some point you will finish that. You know, job. Women get free food. But if they don't attract a man, a proper man that can handle things, they are kind of screwed. I mean, every time I say the same thing, we're like, women don't have skills. Driving a car is like the highest level a woman can get. To technically singing and dancing is like just not really a skill it's more of a performance artistry you know so so far the highest level they have achieved is driving a car i think that's it besides that is just like making things look pretty is their highest skill and the most worshipped of all but eventually you eat that, though the possibilities of just, you know, making things look pretty. Or you just actually avoid making things look pretty. Either way you eat, whatever your choice of eating is, eventually you're gonna run out of lights and things to do. And things to keep you sane and useful to society. You can do what my mom did, is just grab whatever husband, hold for, like, a couple of years, like, five years, get beaten up a bunch of times because uh, he doesn't want to be married to you. But, you know, you basically can hold a hostage. I guess my mom is the bully. Funny enough. A woman can also be a monster. Monster, bro. Full circle. The current score is... 78. The final score, yo, is 94. And it's a pretty big moment to reverse everything in like fucking 10 seconds because you get a fucking star of immortality. Yeah. There's no love story ending. It's just the brothers from Brooklyn, bro, like. They continue their thing in between. Well, I guess 
they expanded their reach into Mushroom Kingdom or whatever. I don't know where the portal is between those dimensions, but they did it. So far, Sonic is like having fun in his origin story. It's kind of fucking weird, but it hits hard. But they take the action into the real world yeah, where, where Sonic, Sonic Team... It's not unusual. I mean, you play Sonic Adventures and they're sort of in the real world running around in the real worlds. There's actual humans all over the place. NBC's humans. It's kind of me mixed up like that. So... I don't see what the what you want from Sonic. Also, they couldn't fucking design Sonic properly from the very beginning. You want them to design the whole fucking worlds of Sonic? Jeez. Well, they actually were able to because that's where the story begins. Sonic running around in his world, but then ends up in reality somehow. That is actually a question mark that makes me makes me more interested than like repelled because like how the fuck sonic adventure you know tr we transitioned into that into this 3d world was sonic always desperate to be as real as possible <laughs> fucking sonic says i hate mushrooms this is so cool bro so fucking cool it's like the earth is more of like a peaceful place where sonic wanted to stay it actually answered my question. This is insane. I'm already enjoying the movie more. And it's so funny because, like, he says, I hate mushrooms when he fucking opens the portal to, like, Mushroom Kingdom. But it's more like fucking rotten mushrooms, bro, with giant. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, man. Well, I don't want to go to that planet. Please, Earth. Wait, if there was a definition of internet browser that would be me am i the bad guy uh, my tablet needs to recharge so gotta do something else for a while might as well complete the arston quests yeah eventually sonic gets really fucking stupid where his footprint is the clue like finding a footprint in a forest you gotta be fucking kidding me robotnik we're exactly 22 minutes in just like the score suggests and uh sonic makes the emp attack because he's very lonely and upset i should do that too sometimes i'm not sure what to expect from the movie which is probably a good deal or it just means that it's very twisted and doesn't make much sense. But now there's a plot line, right? Like, Sonic needs his, his rings from San Francisco. That's the whole thing. And he's being chased by Robotnik. All right. But if he gets his rings, he will leave the Earth. Which is uh, probably not the ending of the story. Today, everything's always about zombies and aliens. Well, back then, in the early 90s, everything was always about dinosaurs. That's so fucking weird, bro. Is that some kind of propaganda going on? But, but again. So yeah, instead of uh, having a world where people just accept that Sonic exists, Sonic is still just making baby steps into the world. Which is questionable of, like, what about second movie? Is that closer to where we kind of, like, are in the Sonic universe? Like, there's even more characters to hide from the people. Will they just accept that there's alien creatures? Mr. Robotnik in the first movie is acting like a man in black situation. Hmm. So 40 minutes in, it's it's slow because it's with real-world elements, and that shit is slow. And also weird to the point where, like, what's the point of watching all of this? Because no, it's, it's just so slow. <laughs> Sonic is fast, man. I don't want a slow-paced action. 
there's actually a very clear des description for the Sonic movie. It's a road trip. It's that fucking slow. <laughs> fucking road trip movie. You watch it while we're having a road trip. For like two hours. In Mario, all the action like happens fairly reasonably fast. They're trying to cram in a lot of material. In this one, they just fucking throw Sonic into the real world. And it's like, have fun in a car, Sonic. This is the biggest torture ever, bro. Oh, have fun in the car. The fastest creature on the planet gets a movie about sitting in the fucking car. It's kind of interesting how it actually kind of makes sense. When Sonic has one ring, he can survive. And if he has zero rings, he can't escape lethal damage. If he has a hundred rings, but he takes damage, he... Tosses all the rings around, like, in the fucking movie. So at least it sort of makes sense. But the other dimension, dimensional rings, like, that's kind of fucking weird. I believe the score is 67 at 1 hour and 15. So I'm watching the outro of Sonic. And then I'm watching the outro of Sonic. And then I'm still watching it. And there's more to watch afterwards. Because of the runtime and because they don't actually show the names yet. And I still have to watch the thing. Sonic is gonna win. What the fuck? That's cheating, bro. <laughs> it's a slower movie. And longer. And more twisted. To the point where you don't know where, when it's gonna end. Holy shit. So yeah, Robotnik gets... Uh, <laughs> exiled into the Mushroom Kingdom, obviously. And he literally looks like Mario. <laughs> except for... Except realistic and not fun. Without toads to keep him company or anything. Or princess. But he's gonna be Hope My Christmas, guys. And then the outro happens, and I'm like, shit, this one is even better than the Mario thing. This one I want to watch, because they bring you back to the old-school Sonic with some added elements, and it's like, shit, man. I I like watching that for sure. Kind of recreates a little bit of parts of the movie in the actual Sonic game, Sonic 1-2, you know, pixelated shit. So let's see where it ends, because Sonic wins? What? I guess it's a tie. And you know why it's a tie? Because of the power of friendship. Hey, that's the greatest meme ever. Yeah, the biggest meme was in the trailer, where Robotnik takes a hair and gets electrocuted, and then offers that hair to his henchman <laughs> i mean hey you want to get you want to taste that electrocution thing yeah mm. so yeah the the mario brothers have friendship the sonic is like oh i felt friendship now i i have to get up and like be all powerful and mighty it's like the power of friendship wow definitely we have to live in this fucking movie where anyone who has genuine friendship is, has also superpowers. Except me. I, I don't have it yet. Any, anyone want superpowers? So yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's Sonic 2 and it kind of like tilts in Sonic favor. Because the movies are pretty much very similar in power level. I pro I would prefer real, real life adaptation, but the cartoon adaptation has more flavor to it. It's faster. It's more appealing as a movie. But I always prefer like real stuff because it's more meaningful, normally, or you can make better jokes, sort of. I mean, it's it's weird. It's some borderline thing where 
these movies can be a lot better. But it's fair. Fucking AVGN has the best thumbnail. I'm probably just gonna borrow it. Or borrow some thumbnail. Oh. This one's even better, actually. Alright, see you guys next time.